Hi everybody, AG6AG. You know, we're all kind of sequestered with this whole coronavirus deal going on, and it's pretty depressing sometimes, especially if you're alone. If you're an amateur radio operator, though, you're lucky, because you know what? You are able to go ahead and get on the air. Now, in our area, we're doing nets every three to six hours just to check on everybody, just to make sure everybody's okay and give folks a place to talk and vent. The problem is a lot of our amateurs are operating on HTs. Now this little gem right here, great radio. By the way, this is the brand new Yesu FT4X. It's a great little radio and it's priced under $100. So this little radio is a real value. But with that, it is an HT. It only has 5 watts, and it has the rubber duck antenna. So, how do you get into a repeater with something like that? Well, if you happen to be close to the repeater, line of sight, you don't have a problem. But what happens if you're a little ways away, and you just can't quite get it open? Well, that's what this video is all about. We want to show you different options and different things that you can do to make it better and easier for you to communicate on your local repeaters. So with that, let's get going. Well, so I bet this looks familiar. This is an HT with a standard rubber duck. Now, it's a great little unit, but it doesn't go very far. And that rubber duck antenna, let's face it, is that a quarter wave or a half wave? No, a quarter wave of two meters would be 19 inches. This isn't even close. So what you basically have is a giant coil of wire. And that giant coil of wire, well, it does okay, but in a lot of cases, it's no better than just a plain old dummy load. Well, here's another option. You can get a high gain antenna for your HT little bit longer, a little bit closer to a quarter wave, uh, but let's face it, what makes up the ground plane here? Well, it's you. Uh, so I guess if you've had lots of liquids, you probably would make a good ground plane, but not always. Now, there's a lot of people that like to hang what we call counterpoises off the bottom of their radio uh, to make up for this antenna deficiency, but me personally, no. Um, I kind of approach this differently. Oh, and by the way, if you're trying to use this HT from inside your house, it has a lot of trouble getting through those stucco walls or whatever uh, other kind of metal construction you might have in your house. So what's the next option? Well, this one isn't exactly obvious, but take a look at this. What I have here is I have a quarter wave mag mount antenna and I have a cookie sheet. Now, what am I going to do with that? Well, I'm going to put the antenna on the cookie sheet, and then I'm going to take an adapter, much like this, and there's a couple different ones. Here's a shot of the one that you would use for a Chinese radio, and here's a shot of one that you would use with a Japanese radio. Uh, your mileage may bear, vary on which one you need. There are quite a few. Some even have BNC connectors. So take a look at your HT and see what's going to be required to adapt it out to a uh, UHF antenna connector. Anyway, once we get our HT on this Pi 10 mag mount antenna assembly, guess what? We've got a pretty good antenna that we can stick outside on a table or on a barbecue or something along that lines and be able to connect probably into that repeater a lot better and a lot cleaner. That doesn't work for you? Well, check this out. Hey, how'd that sneak in here? That looks like a picture of my old uh, lounge chair that I used to use when I watched the kids soccer games. Oh wait, that thing broke. So what it Oh, I remember now. Yeah, that got repurposed. I used that for a handy-dandy little holder for this neat remote antenna setup that I've got. This thing's great. I take this to events all the time. And not only that, but it's really great for your backyard. What does it consist of? 
Well, it consists of one of those photographer lighting tripods and a half wave uh, two meter antenna and of course a mirror mount. So let's kind of take a gander at that. Check out this mirror mount. This is designed to go on the mirror of like a truck and it has on it an NMO antenna mount with coax already connected. Well, what can I do with that? Well, simple enough. There you go. Look at that. There's my half wave antenna sitting on top of my tripod. Now, the tripod, oh, you know, I bought it from Amazon. I think I paid about 20 bucks for a set of two. Um, the mount for the antenna, I may have got that from Amazon. I may have gotten that from RNL, um, but that basically ran somewhere in the area of 20 or $30. The most expensive part of this, of course, is the half-wave antenna. That is actually a Comet half-wave antenna. Now, why do we need a half-wave antenna? Well, you notice we don't have a ground plane down on the bottom here. Half-wave antennas are designed to operate without ground planes in most cases uh, if they're mobile antennas. Anyway, you get this thing all set up and check it out. I got this thing 10 feet in the air. I can stick this in my backyard, and as you can see over in the far left corner, I've got it hooked up to my little handheld. I can reach just about any antenna in the county with this from my backyard, and if you notice, I happen to be in kind of a little bit of a valley area where my house is. So, again, you know, your mileage may vary, but if, you're, if you can't do anything with that magnet idea, this is the one that you should use. Well, guys, it's time for full disclosure here, okay? A couple of things you want to be sure of. Number one, you really want to make sure that you have an SWR meter, okay? Something that you can actually make sure that you're not hurting your radio. Um, these are antennas. Every time you work with an antenna, make sure that you test it. An antenna analyzer is a great investment. If you're going to be doing a lot of work with antennas, you should be using an antenna analyzer. Uh, also, you know, some of the neater parts of this stuff is that with a setup like this, you can stick the antenna outside and bring you and your HT inside where it's warm and cozy. It's not uncommon for uh, me to drag antennas in through the doggy door when I'm doing experiments with this. Full disclosure, though, I've got antennas on my roof, and uh, I have a pretty good rig and stuff behind them. So uh, if you hear me out there and it sounds like I'm doing great, well, I am, and I'm not using what I'm touting here. So uh, your mileage may vary on this stuff. And that brings me to the next subject. Uh, you know, if the mag mount doesn't work and if the antenna mount doesn't work and the tripod doesn't work, well, you know, um, maybe it's time to think about more power. And now you have to make a decision. Do you buy a mobile rig with a power supply and everything else? Or do you buy a power amp uh, with a power supply, okay? Uh, I personally would recommend buying a radio. But for full um, inclusion here, let me go ahead and show you a little bit about small amplifiers for uh, two meters, okay? So here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my pleasure to introduce you to the Mirage B34 VHF amplifier. This amplifier will deliver 35 watts to the antenna with a mere 4 watts input. This will overload at 8 watts input, so make sure you're sending it around 5 watts max. Now, these amplifiers are great. They certainly will boost your power, and for the investment of $155, they come in cheaper than a nice Japanese mobile. That being said, you're still going to need to hook it to a power supply of some kind, um, and uh, it does ship with a cigarette lighter connector, so you can run it off a cigarette lighter power source, uh, although 
I would probably suggest getting a 15 watt uh, or 15 amp power supply to power it. Um, this is a great solution if you just are counting every penny. I will tell you though that having a mobile radio that puts out 50 watts with a decent power supply and here again a 50 watt mobile you can get away with a 15 amp power supply in most cases um, a lot uh, better investment but for what it's worth these work really well. Now all you have to do is connect the input to your HT, connect the output to your antenna, apply power, and turn it on. Then see how you do, if it's that much better. So if you work out the math here, this is somewhere I believe around, well, let's figure it out. If my HT is putting out 5 watts, if I'm putting, if I add 3 dB, it's 10 watts. If I add another 3 dB, that makes 20 watts. If I add another 3 dB, that's going to make it 40 watts. We're a little under that. So I, I'm just going to throw out 8 dB gain. And that's not bad. That's not bad. Um, again, if you don't have success with the mag mount, and if you don't have success uh, with the uh, tripod, go ahead and try this, or even better, go out and buy yourself a nice mobile rig. Well, everybody, that's the video. Hope you enjoyed it. Couple quick things. Number one, never, ever, ever set up an antenna in a thunderstorm or in any kind of high wind. Number two, if you're using the tripod model that we've shown here, you may want to consider using uh, sandbags to anchor it down at the bottom so it doesn't tip over. Um, also, you may want to consider under high wind conditions to use guy ropes, guy wires, whatever, to keep it from blowing over. That's really about it. Let me know how this works out for you. I have a lot of people that ask me how to get better distance out of their HT. And these are my two go-to ideas. The third idea with the amp, I'm not 100% behind, but you know, if you can give me a really good argument as to why that is a super good idea to go with an amp, put the comments down below so I can see your thoughts. Anyway, hope you enjoyed it. And 73 from AG6AG.